Um, I have been waiting for this for a long time. And now that quilt festival is over, I can talk about it. So um, I wasn't supposed to talk about it before that. <clears throat> this is my new quilt. Well, new as in I finished this quilt originally in 2017 as a gift for DJ's brother and his wife when they got married. You can see they still don't have it. They don't follow me, so they won't know about it. It's okay. Um, I guess the reason I never gave it to him was because I wanted to write the pattern off of it. So here's what, here's what happened. I made this quilt, um, I, like I said, 2017. The pattern or the original inspiration to the pattern was just solid triangles. So basically it was two colors of triangles that were sewn together. So like where this solid white one was, there was a solid other color over there. And I thought, how much fun would it be if I did strip sets? So I was just messing around with scrap fabric one day and I started making these strip sets and cutting them apart. Then I started laying them out in this layout. <clears throat> so I thought, man, this would be really cool for a wedding quilt. And then I just was messing with it and I, I, I didn't know what I was doing with it. I was just playing with triangles. Well, they, um, I can't remember if they had just gotten married or they're about to get married or what it was. So I texted him and asked what her favorite color was and I texted her and asked what his favorite color was. And these were the colors. Um, one of them is represented by green and one of them is represented by teal. Um, and it just sort of evolved from there. It just kind of, it just kind of turned into this thing. So the plan was to be able to give it to them as a gift, but we've never actually seen them together since they've gotten married. So I, I guess at some point I'm just going to have to mail it to them. I keep saying I'm going to ship it to them every year for their anniversary. It's still here. So maybe next year, maybe, maybe, maybe next year. So that's the story behind this quilt. We called it, or I called it love fills the spaces because it's designed to represent two people, um, whether they're married, whether they're siblings, whether they're partners, whatever, um, any two people, doesn't matter could be a, a parent child situation it doesn't really matter what the story to the quilt is is that um hang on i'm trying to scroll through comments and i'm trying to look for questions so if i don't see your questions then you know just say it again um what it's supposed to be is that each color on either end i know you can't really see the bottom but see there's the top of the quilt up there where the green goes all the way up teal goes all the way down what it's supposed to be is that each person is sort of floating out there in the world on their own, right? So that's what all the white represents. And then, you know, as you're, as you're growing and learning and figuring out who you are, so that's up to about here. Then you meet somebody and you, they start to sort of grow together, right? So both colors are represented here and here and here. You'll see where some of the, some of the rows have both colors. In this row, it's the one person plus the blend, and the person and the blend, and the person and the blend. The idea being that as you grow with your partner, you also grow within yourself. So the idea is that growth happens until you get to a place where the outside world is no longer visible. So the center row is just the two colors together. There's still just tiny bits of the outside world here, right? In the center row, it's just those two colors represented together. So that's what I came up with. Um, that being said, <clears throat> when did I get COVID in May? I had COVID in May. So I was quarantined for a week and I was bored out of my ever loving mind. And um, so I had DJ come and get the quilt and bring me some rulers and some tape measures and some paper. And I just sort of started sketching it and measuring everything and getting everything together. So, um, while I was stuck in quarantine, I started writing out the pattern. I started typing it all out. And um, all I had was this quilt to go off of. That being said, <clears throat> I hate when I get a pattern and it was obvious that nobody tested it. <laughs> it's obvious that nobody proofread it. Um, I didn't wanna be that person. I only have one other published pattern to my name this is gonna be my second one and I wanted it to be right. So here's the result to that. 
We had one little um, typo, not even a typo, I just forgot to add something in here. So this is gonna come back from the printer probably on Wednesday, and so I will start to get them in the mail. So when I started sending this out to, um, I just sort of asked for guinea pigs who would test it. A couple of brave souls opted to do that for me, which was fantastic. Um, I only have one of the sample quilts with me that, that someone had made because Um, I was asked to partner with Alex Anderson and Quilter Select to demo and um, use this pattern for Alex's new ruler that just hit the market at Quilt Market. So if you're a Quilter Select fiend like I am, once I started using Quilter Select rulers, every time I pick up any other ruler, I just get annoyed. Um, and about a year ago, I was like, God, I wish she would make a triangle ruler. Because I have triangle rulers that I really, really like. But if it could not slip, that would be amazing. This ruler does not slip. So this ruler is not yet available. But this is a prototype that they sent me to play with. So um, I remade the quilt in a miniature version, which I don't have. I have a picture of it. I'll post it in the comments. I recreated this quilt because this ruler makes such precise pieces, I shrunk the quilt down to half size, okay? This is gonna be a class. To show you how to do this, this is gonna be an online class. But you can see how this triangle is half the size of the triangle that's in the quilt. Um, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, um, this ruler, <laughs> I was in the process of doing this when I got my hands on this ruler. I was halfway through making this teeny tiny little quilt hanger. It was so annoying. After I got this, going back and looking at the work I had already done. Now mind you, I've made this quilt before. Going back and looking at the work I had already done for the miniature ones, they were not good enough. I threw them all away and I started over using this ruler and every piece came out perfect. So, in the conversation about this quilt and the pattern with um, the Quilter Select people, I was like, oh wait, I'm gonna show you this. They asked if they could borrow my quilts and take them to quilt festival and quilt market and all that sort of stuff so that they could demo the pattern with this ruler. And I was like, what was I gonna say, no? I don't think you tell Alex Anderson no. I think that's a bad plan. So, what? Oh, well, yeah, right. Yeah, don't tell her so no. I don't think we should tell her no, so I didn't. I'm going to show you um, Brooke's version of the quilt. So Eva and Patty and Brooke all made the quilt for me and tested it out and told me what I needed to change and things I should add in and, and um, you know, which diagrams we should change and add and include. So that was really great. It was really nice to have people who weren't full of COVID to figure out what I was missing. So DJ's going to hold up Brooke's quilt. And I'm going to show you a couple of things about this quilt. So my idea with this quilt when I wrote it to begin with was that any two colors could be used to represent two people, right? So when I had, when I had people test the pattern, I gave them absolutely no insight or preference or anything about colors because I really wanted to prove that you could pick any two colors and put them together and they would be amazing. So, Brooke chose sort of this, these teal colorways and these sort of corally colors. And look at how beautiful those all weave together. She's also the only one that used all solids. Um, and then she sent me the quilt top and she's like, I don't care how you quilt it, just quilt it. So this is what I put on the back. This is the binding that I chose. So I literally just got the binding finished about two days ago. Are your arms tired? I'm good. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is proof, I think, that you can put any two colors together and it works. All right, you can, you can put it down there. So if you look at the photographs that are on the website or on the back of the pattern, so this is a picture of Patty's quilt. She chose purples and greens. Eva chose blues and reds. Um, if you wanna see better pictures of this, you can see them on the website. This was a really fun project to do. 
When I made the wall hanging version, and by shrinking the block down to half size, the wall hanging version only came out to be like 25 by 40. So it's longer and it's thinner, so it's, it's a wall hanging size. I did blue and yellow. So very contrasting colors in batiks and white background. Um, I haven't done one with a dark background yet, but I will. We are in the process of setting it all up so that we can do a recording so we can do a video and you can take the class online. The class online is going to show you how to use a block lock ruler to get, where did I put that tiny little triangle? To get these crazy precise tiny little strip sets using a block lock ruler. So hot tip, you can use the half inch or one, and one inch block lock ruler to make these strip sets and then it doesn't even matter if you sew it really straight because you can use a block lock ruler to trim it down and make it all perfect. So the combination of this ruler and this ruler makes this quilt a piece of cake, okay? So does anybody have questions about anything? Sorry, I'm trying to keep up. Um, I am so proud of this entire process. Um, and it was one of those sort of lots of work turned into a sort of instant manifestation with a big red bow on the top and I'm so very very happy and so very proud of it that I wanted to share it all with you guys in one move. Um, Sue the wall hanging pattern is not in the pattern yet. What I'm going to do is just give you the extra little tips on, on size on shrinking it down and I'm going to add a page in there. Um, it's also going to be part of the video class. Um, because there is a little extra bit with the block lock bit, um, side point, when I was posting pictures, I can't find, do you know where those little teeny tiny triangles are? Just because I was completely bonkers one day, I decided to try to make this, this little triangle with quarter inch strips. <laughs> so the, the pattern or the triangle actually comes out to be like one and three quarters inch finished. It's completely bonkers. But again, the combination of the block lock ruler and the fact that this ruler does not slip, they came out perfect. So um, I am going to give you the math on that and we'll do that as part of our, um, of our online class. That is another thing that we're getting ready to roll out um, is our online classroom which will have multiple different quilts that you can make the quilt along with me as segments on our website, okay? Um, Janet, mm, a new quilter, a new quilter could do this quilt if they took the class with me online because I'm gonna help you with bias, with trimming, with a lot of a lot of things. One of the things I really dig about the new quilter select ruler is the engineered points. So you'll notice that on my triangle, these are leftover bits from me making the wall hanging. These are a couple leftover squares. I trimmed all three corners of it. And that that stupid little step right there made this quilt go together with perfection. The other thing that I think would be really great for a new quilter is there are pressing instructions in the quilt because I can't, or in the pattern because I can't stand when there's not pressing instructions. The pressing instructions are an interesting sort of rule of thumb um, that I think would be a really great option for a new quilter so that they understand the mechanics of how a quilt goes together and how it lays really nice and flat. So hopefully once I get past the holiday season, um, we'll have those videos up. Right now I am working on the Barrel of Fun quilt, the one that was from the Quilt Sampler Magazine. I'm remaking that right now in Moon Garden and that is going to be the first video class that goes on the website. Reason for that, I will have kits for that. The reason that this one won't be a class until after the new year is because this ruler isn't available until January. Okay, um, so does anybody else have any other questions? Somebody asked me a question about something. Yes, I, okay. Here's the deal about kidding it, Lori. Since the quilt is designed to represent two individuals, it's hard to kit as a specific thing. So what I'm gonna show you on today's sale, in fact, is an option, a custom kitting option, where if you have two people in mind, you can order the kit as a custom option. You tell me if you want a light or a dark background, and then you give me two colors. 
and I will build you a kit based on those colors because it's kind of hard to do them very specifically, right? So that way you can have a custom made kit, but you don't have to go and pick out all the colors. So when I made this quilt, I went through my stash and I pulled out all the teals and I pulled out all the greens and I pulled out what I had and then I went shopping and filled in the other colors. Um, the thing that really makes this work well is color contrast. So you'll notice that all my colors are sort of medium to dark tones, but my background is light. So that's a really good example of color contrast because there is a sharp contrast. So if you're gonna do a dark background, I would probably do medium to light colors so that the pop is really obvious, okay? Um, the size, so that's a good question. The size of the quilt is 78 by 98 if you don't put borders on it. So I made it to basically fit like a, like a full or a queen size bed. You can put, I, I gave you six inch border options. I did the math for six inch borders. You can put whatever size borders you want on it. Um, the pattern quotes 90 by 110 if you put borders on it. So you could make it for a full or queen, full queen size, or you could make it king size by just adding borders. Here's the real secret though. If you don't wanna put borders on it, it is very easy to just make more strip sets and make it as big as you want or as small as you want. If you wanna make this as a, as a lap throw or a, or a couch throw or whatever, you can do that. You would just make it narrower. You wouldn't make as many sizes, okay? Um, yeah, so the custom kitting thing, I just came up with that today. So um, I did put it on today's sale, so you have that as an option. So, all right, um, Nikki, I'm on Mondays, I'm not normally here. I really try to take Mondays off because I try to keep my sanity in the very fine limit of it that I have. So um, normally I'm not here on Mondays. I pre-record my Monday videos, but I really wanted this to be a live video because I wanted to be able to answer questions and show you the quilt and all that sort of stuff. But normally I'm here until about six or seven, most nights. Um, hello, Jeannie. Glad you're here. You can be late. That's okay. We don't mind. All right. So you guys can keep asking questions if you want to know anything about this quilt or anything else if you want to. Um, I'm going to talk about the things that I used in the quilt and we will go ahead and do that on today's sale or um, you can pick them up on the website as well. So obviously the pattern is first and forefront. When I get the other quilts back from Quilt Market, so um, Alex's people actually have the other three quilts right now. They have the two quilts that were on here. I didn't send Brooks just because I hadn't finished putting the binding on it when I shipped it. So they have um, Patty and Eva's quilt right now and they have the small wall size, wall hanging one, the yellow and blue one. So they have, they have those right now, I should get them back. I mean, they're just coming back from Houston right now, so I should get them back next week. Um, yes, that is this, well, the version of this, those three quilts are the ones I sent to Houston. So they are still there. I should get them back next week. So as soon as I get them back and I can hang them up, then I'll start recording the video. So, okay. So on the sale today, obviously is the pattern. That is number one. Number two, we are pre-selling the Quilter Select 60 degree equilateral triangle. The ruler is not set to drop until January. But since I have one and I've ordered them, I'm gonna go ahead and do pre-sales on them and then as soon as they come in, you'll be the first to get it. Remember, January, and that is the expected date. We all know that dates are subjective these days, okay? Um, so number two on the sale is a pre-sale for this Schmexy ruler right here. A couple of things I want to point out about this ruler. And I was going to give you a little demo on the things that I really dig about it, but I think I'm going to save that for another Monday video. A couple of things I want to point out about the way this ruler is made. One, if you've ever touched a Coulter Select ruler, you know that the back has that non-slip stuff on the back, right? The stuff that feels a little bit like shark skin. This sucker does not slide. So when I'm cutting apart strip sets like this that are not flat, you know, they've got lots of seams to them. Sometimes when you put a, um, a standard ruler on a strip set, it doesn't sit quite flat on the surface. And so it kind of slides around a little bit and you don't necessarily get a nice straight cut. That's what happened the, when I started making this quilt to begin with. I had a ruler that I liked just fine that I've been using for years, but I wasn't getting the 
precision that I wanted on every single cut because even the stuff, even the rulers that have a little bit of non-slip, they still slip a little bit, especially when the fabric's not flat because you've got seams in it. So I'm not joking. I had half that quilt made and then, I, and then they sent me this ruler to play with and I started cutting these out and I just got annoyed and so I threw them all away and I started it over. I do that sometimes. So um, that is one thing I really like. I like that all three corners are engineered so you can snip every single corner at a 60 degree angle. I like that the center is delineated very clearly. I like that just like on every other quilter select ruler, the whole numbers have a solid line, the half numbers have a dotted line, and the three and the quarter lines have a skinnier dotted line. So if you're already used to the way a quilter select ruler reads, this one's gonna read the same. I also appreciate that the lines on the sides also help you line up your angle because they're just a solid line. So if you're matching up a strip set, say, like this, and you want to match up just that one angle. In fact, these are three and a half inch triangles. Didn't matter which way I picked up this ruler, this matched up to the end of my, my strip set. Okay, so I really like that also. There's so many cool things I like about this ruler. I'm already working on two other patterns using this ruler. So you're gonna be tired of hearing me talk about this ruler because I'm just that much in love with it. It is by far a game changer. It is absolutely a game changer. Um, let's see, Julie said, I have the Creative Grid 60 degree ruler. Is there an advantage to getting the Quilter Select? Would you recommend getting this Quilter Select as well? So I've always loved the Creative Grids ruler. The big benefit to the Creative Grids ruler is it comes 12 and a half inches. So if you need a larger ruler and you don't want to do the extra math and the extra lines up to get the bigger ruler um, creative grids does have a 12 and a half um quilter select only has the eight and a half at this point personally i'm one of those people that just i really like toys i like all the toys i'm like a woodworker and i just yeah i have that tool that does that one thing um they both have their benefits and i still use both of them um, the, the thing I, the benefit of the Quilter Select one that I really, really like is like I was saying, when you're doing strip sets, it does not slide. It does not slide. And it doesn't matter which corner you pick. They're all engineered. I am a big fan of trimming off the points on the corners because then I know everything lines up. I hate trying to find the middle of a triangle and line it up to the middle of anything else. I don't have to with this because the points are engineered. Okay. Um, yeah, so, and uh, and full honesty, Quilter Select's how I made that one. I mean, Creative Grids is how I made this one. So, yes, especially with the bigger one, you can totally do it with the Creative Grids ruler if, if you want to. Totally. Um, again, that's what I had when I made this. That's what I used this one to do that with. The smaller one, I definitely would go with this one for sure. Um, yeah, Mary Ellen says she bought her first Quilter Select ruler on Saturday. You will never go back. Um, I, I always joke when people come in and they have never had a Quilter Select ruler. I'm like, look, I'm like a drug dealer and you can have the first one for free because you will get so addicted. You'll go to pick up another ruler and you will just get angry. I have rulers that I have literally thrown away before because they just, some rulers are just slippery, more slippery than others. And again, people always come in the shop and they talk about how, um, they're not patient enough to quilt. Like, I get that idea, but I know a lot of quilters and we are not patient people. We want to get it done right and we want to get it done fast because we want to work on the other 29 projects that we have going. We're not patient people. And so that's how things like this get created because we get frustrated by a thing and somebody somewhere goes, I need to fix this and um you know puts the ask out to the universe and then you end up with something cooler that fixes the problem you didn't even know you had at the time right um that's what that's why quilters are so cool because we come up with all of these things that make things go so much more easily <laughs> so now every time i pick up a ruler that's not a quilter select uh, for instance this ruler right here i'm not gonna i'm gonna try really hard not to show a brand 
this ruler right here is in my classroom because it's a cautionary tale. We'll leave it at that. So when we have classes, people will pick up the Coulter Select ruler and start cutting with it, and then they'll pick up that one. They're like, what's wrong with this ruler? I'm like, yeah, I know. It's, it's just, it's a thing. So um, let's see. What else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, yeah, Michelle, get back to work. Yeah. Julie, I think you're really going to like this ruler, especially if you like doing small stuff. I will. I don't know what happened to the little one that I was making that was the tiny little quarter inch finished triangles. I'll post a picture in the comments. I have a picture where I was holding one in my hand and it, it literally fits in the palm of my hand. It was a piece of cake because the ruler doesn't slip. Okay. So now, number two on the sale is a pre-sale. These rulers are not available until January. Please don't send me angry emails that I forgot to put it in your package. Then, like I said before, if you want to just for fun, and I did do a teaser video months ago. If you remember me showing you guys a different way to use a block lock ruler, maybe in July, June or July, I showed you how to sew strip sets with a block lock ruler. Remember that? Go back and watch that video this will look familiar because I was making these triangles by using this I didn't have the Coulter select ruler yet I just had these and so I was my brain was doing the thinking thoughts on how to make these easier and can I just tell you that a half inch finished strip set is not as easy as it sounds but by using this little tool it is so quilter select or see, i got too many words block block log cabin rulers are designed to make log cabins i used it to make strip sets so i literally just sewed two pieces of fabric together locked my block lock onto the seam trimmed off the extra fabric and then i had a perfect half inch finished strip set so here's another example this is another similar technique but pattern i'm working on right now so these are all half inch finished strip sets because I used this. Look at how perfect they are. They did not start out perfect. I rough cut the strips. I sewed them together. I trimmed them down with this. I sewed the next one on. I trimmed it down with this. I sewed the next one on. I trimmed it down with this. This strip set took me about four minutes to make. Okay. And see how the seams are all pressed one way. And then you use this to trim it. So I'm going to put this on today's sale for anybody that thinks that they might want to make this. Hot tip, this half inch size makes this size strip set. The one inch size is what you need to make this. Okay. I hadn't come up with this idea yet when I wrote the pattern. So I'm going to do an additional little sheet, page sheet to go into this to show you the trick of doing this. Plus I have a video that's on YouTube that'll show you how to do that. So this is a half inch, one inch log cabin. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What degree triangle is it? Mary, this is a 60 degree triangle. 60 degree equilateral triangle. So every corner is the same. Which is cool too, because you don't have to remember which one you're using to cut it. That's pretty cool. Okay, so this is the block lock ruler I used. The block lock ruler comes in lots of sizes. You want to make these blocks bigger? Use a bigger block lock. You want to make these blocks smaller? Use a smaller block lock. Like I said, half inch is pretty tiny. That's what makes this size. But I did try it with a quarter inch just to see if I was crazy. And I am. So next, number four on the sale, we talked about the custom kits. If you want me to build you a kit, I'm happy to. Give me three colors. You want a light background, you want a dark background, and two colors that represent two people. Um, that's how I started. I just started mixing colors together. So I have a yellow and blue quilt. I have a um, red and blue quilt. I have a blue and green quilt and I have a green and purple quilt. It doesn't really matter which colors you put together. So long as the contrast is stark enough with the background, they're going to go okay. Because any point of the color wheel, you can make those colors friends with each other. Whether they're monochromatic or tertiary or primary or whatever, or contrasting, it doesn't really matter. Colors are like flowers, and, and you don't usually say the pink flower doesn't yet go with the yellow flower, right? They're flowers. So the combination of using multiple different fabrics 
also gives you all that movement. I just use the similar color value to them, right? Hello, Marshall. Yeah, every, you know, you know why. I know you love me because I'm crazy. It's because I make you look less crazy. <laughs> okay, so we are going to do custom quilt kits. So if you, like I said, you give me an option of a light color or a dark color background and then give me two colors. Do like I did. Text one of them and ask what their favorite color is. Text the other one and ask what their favorite color is. You don't have to tell nobody nothing. And then you can just make the thing, okay? Um, and I really love picking out fabric. I really love making quilt kits. So I'm gonna have fun with that anyway, okay? So those four things are all we have on today's sale. And I really just wanted to celebrate my new baby with you guys. I hope you all love it as much as I do. If you have a wedding coming up or you just like the quilt, here's, here's a secret. You can just make it for yourself and just pick two colors you like. You don't have to do all that other stuff, okay? So, um, let's see. Would you, would the shipping... Oh yeah, absolutely, Janice. I'll combine, I'll combine everything anyway. I try my absolute hardest to do that. Like if I know that you have an order from yesterday or two days ago and I haven't put in a box yet, I try my absolute best to put them together. Sometimes I win that game and sometimes I don't. But yeah, if you wanna do that, just put a note in your, in your checkout to combine them and I will put them together. I really don't mind doing that ever. So that's perfect. Um, Marshall, the quilt finishes 78 by 98 if you don't put borders on it or 90 by 110 if you put six inch borders on it. But again, I know you got here a little bit late. You can just make more squares or more triangles and make it as wide as you want to. Um, it really is a fun quilt. And once you get into the rhythm, it's not a hard one to make either. So it's one of those things where if you don't want to think, you can just sit there and sew some strip sets together until you have enough strip sets and then put them in a pile until you're ready to cut them up. So, okay. It was really lovely to talk to you guys all tonight. Thank you for um, supporting my, uh, my habit here. I do have a list of other things that are in the works. Like I said, I have, a, I have another pattern using this ruler plus one other ruler. It's gonna be a whole bunch of fun. I'm hoping to get that one. I'm hoping to have that one to show you in two weeks. So, all right. Ooh, Diana says, imagine um, black and gray on white. I would support that decision hardcore for sure so all right i will see you guys on wednesday don't forget we're having a rummage sale six o'clock wednesday night so we will see you then